Big Canoe is fortunate to have the wildlife that it has, with bears, fox, bobcats, turkeys, and deer, among others. Every now and then, something unique comes to visit Big Canoe. This is Snooty, the famous Big Canoe turkey. He was seen from Ridgeview to Sanderlin to Wet Mountain, literally all over Big Canoe. Dave Terrell was fortunate enough to photograph him one afternoon. Dave and Charlene's Swiss house guest, Roland, fed Snooty sunflower seeds to keep him calm while Dave photographed him as he had chased Dave and Ron Hendricks inside before when he got a little testy. Snooty had also terrorized one of the big canoe widows, Mabel Andrews. Snooty would wait every morning for Mabel to come out to get in her car and chase her to her car, and he would wait then for Mabel to come home in the afternoon and chase her right back in the house. Mabel enlisted Dave Terrell to help her with her problem as she did not like Snooty's advances and wanted to convince him that the other turkey hens were much more appropriate for his How did Snooty get to Big Canoe? A hunter found some abandoned turkey eggs, took them home, incubated them, and they all hatched. Numerous things happened to the other turkeys, but Snooty survived and was brought to Big Canoe in the early 80s. It wasn't known at the time whether or not Snooty could survive in the wild. He was released on Tolan Mountain among a flock of wild turkeys. It wouldn't be unusual for Snooty to spot someone running a big canoe, and he thought he was a road runner, and he enjoyed running too. Snooty was handsome, and he knew it. Over time, Snooty spent less and less time with people and hung out with his male turkey friends. He would occasionally come over and visit with people. It was easy to identify Snooty because he was much larger than all the other turkeys. Over time, he was rarely seen, and he was last photographed in April of 1989. No one knows what happened to Snooty, but he will long be remembered as one of our resident celebrities. Snooty, since he was a very large turkey, he was a celebrity because he was part of our history. Snooty starred in a video that was produced by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources and was shown for many years at the Amicola State Park. Meet Webster, the resident big canoe monkey and my friend. Webster would occasionally get off of his leash and I would get a call from Ed to come over and help get him back in his cage. Webster seemed to have decided I was one of his favorites and he would usually come running when he saw my car pull up, much to Ed and Mary's relief. Webster was a capuchin monkey fostered by Ed and Mary Lawson who lived here on Indigo Bunning Trail. Webster was a part of the Helping Ham Simeon Aid Program, a nonprofit organization that trained and placed monkeys with disabled people. Webster came to Big Canoe from Walt Disney World's Discovery Island. The monkeys were raised there, and then at eight weeks, they were placed in a human foster family to be socialized in preparation for additional training. Webster came to live with the Lawsons in Big Canoe in 1990, and he was trained to handle some simple tasks such as reaching and fetching. Ed and Mary had lived in Africa for 17 years and had pet monkeys over there, so they were the ideal foster parents for Webster. It was their job to toilet train him and teach him not to bite. Although monkeys can be difficult to train, Webster was troublesome and more difficult to train. He was a year and a half older than the other monkeys that are typically placed in foster homes. He was quite the troublemaker. He had been previously removed from another foster family because he had difficulty in learning the essentials such as toilet training and particularly troublesome was his biting. It took about a month for Webster to learn the essentials, but not before taking a few bites out of Ed's fingers. On May 24, 1993, it was time for Westford to graduate from his extensional training, and that was celebrated at Vacation Bible School. And this photo here is Kathleen Ingram holding Webster after she put his t-shirt on. Webster was such a good boy during graduation ceremony, so Ed and Mary took him for a boat ride at the marina. 
1992, a wildlife worker contacted Ann Felderman to help with an abandoned fawn. They took the young deer home and fed it goat's milk. After six months, the deer was ready for carrots and apples. Ann decided to give her young house guests a name, Baby Doe. Baby Doe soon became a big doe, and it was time for Baby Doe to go out on her own. Anne tied a pink ribbon around Baby Doe's neck so that she could easily be identified. It wasn't long before Baby Doe took up with a young buck. The relationship produced a young doe that Anne quickly named Sunshine, and later Baby Doe had twins. Anne was asked to raise another young doe, which she named Spunky, and eventually Spunky had her own little buck, which was named Stinker. A few years later, someone found another abandoned doe and asked uh, Anne to raise it, and she named that Sasha. Later, there was a fawn found on the side of the road resting by its dead mother. This fawn was taken in by Libby Goodwin and her mother, Ava. They named the fawn Rudy, and when it was time for him to grow in, go into the wild, a big red tag was placed on his ear. No information was found on the whereabouts of the deer raised by Big Canoe, but it is believed that they lived a long and healthy life. In June 1998, Lee and Warren Culpepper were walking their dogs on the Ridgeview Trail when they spotted this large turkey. That's the biggest turkey I've ever seen. Then this bird, which had been resting on the ground, suddenly stood up and he was as tall as they were. This certainly was no turkey. He said it took a while to discover where the emu had escaped from. The next day, the emu visited their house and it was seen in other parts of Ridge Roo and throughout Big Canoe. Imagine some beautiful white swans swimming around on Lake Pettit. They were found dead one spring and the mystery of the death was not solved, but the rumor has it is they were pretty mean to be around. Well, in 2013, there was loud screeching sounds from the trees in various parts of the community. Proved rare and exotic had found Big Canoe. A pair of peacocks roamed the woods and found several perches they liked to visit on on Sanderland Mountain and around the Ridgeview area. Well, the last reported uh, unique little creature in Big Canoe was in June of 2018, and this is a photo of a rare white peafowl found around the bocce courts. It's a good life in Big Canoe for wildlife. May they all thrive in this sanctuary. Hope you enjoyed this presentation.